Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Davis, the editor of BioIT World, the flagship publication of Cambridge Health Tech Institute. And we're here to preview drug discovery, chemistry, an exciting conference coming up in April in San Diego. I'll give you the dates a bit later. But joining me is Doug Trico, the founder and CEO of Ra Pharmaceuticals, one of the uh, star attractions at the conference. And we're going to speak with Doug for a few minutes and get a sense of uh, his research at the company and a preview of his upcoming talk. Doug, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Kevin. So let's talk about your company, Ra Pharmaceuticals. Uh, what's, what's the overarching uh, mission of the company? Well, the mission of the company is to develop uh, uh, peptides into a more useful class of drug. Uh, peptides, there's 60 or 70 on the market right now, but they're all uh, injectable products, uh, with the exception of one. And uh, that one gives us some guidance on how we can build peptides into a new class of drug. Okay, so how does this relate to one of the main themes of the meeting, which is constrained peptides and macrocyclics? So uh, there's a lot of interest in macrocycles these days, uh, mainly because uh, when you constrain a molecule uh, and you essentially reduce the degrees of freedom or the number of positions it can exist in, uh, you generally can generate much higher um, affinities to targets. And so um, I think the, this interest in the world uh, is getting people really excited about trying to come up with a class of molecule that does something new and different, has higher binding affinity, and is larger than a typical small molecule to make more contacts with the targets. And these are things that are needed to disrupt intracellular protein-protein interactions. Now, these molecules exist in nature, correct? Well, the, um, we're building off of um, information that comes out of sequencing natural products and our understanding of natural products. And so there are a number of uh, uh, cyclic molecules that come out of nature, mostly antibiotics, and they give us guidance for what we want to build into a molecule uh, in our libraries, which are not natural product libraries, but are made uh, through a relatively complex molecular biological technology. And why the excitement about this class of compounds? Is it simply that they they fall in, in terms of size between small molecules on one end of the spectrum and large monoclonal antibodies on another? Is it the chemical space, or is it some other facet of their of their physico-chemical properties. Yeah, so the, the problem with proteins is that uh, even though, although they're great molecules, we wouldn't call them drug-like because you have to inject them. And second, they don't get into cells. Small molecules, you don't have to inject often because they have natural permeability and they get into cells quite well. And the problem is, is that they can't make the number of contacts with their targets, the small molecules, can't make the number of contacts with their targets that, that proteins can. And therefore, they can't do the complex things like break apart two interacting proteins. And so we think that this this molecular class of, um, of macrocycles, which is larger than a typical small molecule, maybe on the order of 700 to 1200 Daltons, we believe that this class of molecule is going to be able to bridge that gap, get into cells, and break apart complex protein-protein interactions. Uh, Doug, the, the company's a few years old. Um, Give us a sense of the progress that you've made, and I'm curious which, which disease areas, if any, that you're specifically targeting. Yeah, we're, we're still in the discovery stage, but we're moving into animals now. Uh, one of the therapeutic uh, areas that we've uh, focused on are rare diseases, and for small companies, uh, you can move a project along relatively quickly. Uh, there's a fairly well-defined regulatory path, and for diseases where there's a small, small number of patients, uh, the clinical trials can be relatively small, and that, that's uh, quite convenient for a small company. And so one of the diseases that we're focusing on in that area is hereditary angioedema and making a, an enzyme inhibitor that's useful for treating that rare disease. Uh, the other uh, area we're interested in are intracellular protein-protein interactions, as I mentioned, and these are very important in regulating cell signaling pathways, and a lot of those are really important in cancer. So uh, we ultimately feel we'll grab gravitate naturally to become an oncology-based company. And where does the name Ra Pharmaceuticals come from? Uh, well, the class of molecule that we're making is called a uh, cyclomimetic. Uh, it's a cyclic peptidomimetic. Uh, and I wanted to call the company cyclomimetics, but the, inve <laughs> the investors hated it. And so I was looking uh, for something that was kind of, uh, less uh, focused on what the technology was, but yeah. maybe a catchy name. Yeah. And so I looked at 
stars and constellations and gods and goddesses. And I had uh, just got back from Egypt when we you know, got really interested in putting the company together. So uh, we named it after the Egyptian sun god, Ra. Fantastic. So I mentioned you're uh, one of the speakers at the uh, Drug Discovery Chemistry Conference coming up April 16th to 18th in, in San Diego, hosted by CHI. Um, what's going to be the sort of the main objective and focus of your presentation there? Well, we'll talk about the technology platform itself, uh, this, this technology that came out of Jack Shostak's lab at, at MGH, uh, where we can build these massive libraries of cyclic peptidomimetics. Uh, I'll talk about building that platform, which is a very complex and difficult endeavor. And then I'll talk about some of the tar uh, targets that we've addressed successfully. And I'm glad you mentioned Jack's name because you co-founded the company with him and trained with him many, many moons ago. What, how, how, tell me what it's like to, to work with a, with a scientist of, of his uh, success and stature. Uh, I mean, working with Jack was great. He lets people come into the lab and do anything they want, essentially. <laughs> and um, uh, he's very supportive of new ideas. Right. And uh, I was fortunate to work with him twice, uh, many years ago on genetic recombination, and then more recently on some of his origin of life projects, which are fascinating. Mm -hmm. And you've both had some success in the biotech arena before, so this is not your first go round. No, I had started a company in 1988 called uh, Transkaryotic Therapies here in Cambridge, and that company uh, was uh, founded to do gene therapy, uh, but we ultimately became a, a company that was pretty successful in developing a number of injectable protein therapeutics. Mm, excellent. Well, we look forward to your presentation in April at Drug Discovery Chemistry, but for now, Doug, thanks very much. Thanks, thanks for joining Kevin. us. Thanks, Kevin. Okay.